Now, a 31 year old who is a right handed woman has a alcohol abuse requiring detox. Currently, she is drinking about 9 beers 3 days per week. Little better. Huh? So, she drank 5 glasses of wine, 3 beers 5 days ago. And she had 10 beers last night. This morning, she woke up feeling well. But uh, beer is only 3 to 4 percent alcohol. Itna bada beer piye to bhi, thoda alcohol andar jayega. How much is red wine, white wine? 12 to 14 percent. How much is whiskey? 40 to 48 percent. Of course, there are brands where you will get even 56 percent, 58 percent also. So, uh, you must know alcohol percentages in various uh, drinks. One of the favorite questions in MD final year exam. You can't tell examiner, sorry sir, I don't drink. Then he will say, you drink and come after six months. So anyway, I will fail you so that you get motivation to become a Devdas to drink in next time. But next time, questions won't be on drink. That's the challenge. Huh? So, 31 year old right handed woman with all that alcohol, blah, blah. And uh, EEG was normal. And uh, uh, MRI was normal. But she is having, uh, um, she initially did not recognize her fiancé or his sister. But she should be sure that her fiancé and her, his sister recognize each other. While she is having this alcoholic uh, uh, blackout, uh, that can be real danger. So, uh, it is a case of metabolic uh, alcohol withdrawal syndrome during which this kind of uh, clinical presentation can occur. Four year old with onset of seizures, generalized tonic seizures and uh, EEG is showing 1.5 to 2 hertz spikes. So classically is an example of a Lennox Gastrot syndrome. Similarly, 27 year old, infrequent episodes of nausea and vomit and uh, warmth rising through the, his body. Unusual ador, like a uh, rotten fish like ador he is able to feel. And MRI typically is showing a lesion in the temporal lobe in the area. What is that area? Pointed called uncus. So temporal lobe seizures will lead to gustatory hallucinations olfactory hallucinations etc etc now a 48 a 18 year old girl riding on the back of her boyfriend's motorbike without a helmet is brought with a left frontal skull fracture and she has no seizures but why do you want to give anticonvulsant therapy basically if there is a skull fracture there can be a post traumatic seizures so basically to reduce the incidence of early post-traumatic seizures, though presently there are no seizures, the recommendations say when there is a skull fracture, you need to give anticonvulsants. A patient has partial, complex partial seizures and he has undergone lobectomy of the temporal lobe. So what problem he is supposed to get? Typically he will get a right superior quadrantanopsia. If the parietal lobe is involved, you get an inferior quadrantanopia, and when the temporal lobe is involved, you get a superior quadrantanopia. Now, a seven months more that visual field defects starting from retina up to occipital lobe, where the injury, how to recognize optic chasma, if it is cut, what will happen? Uh, whenever the mayor's loop is cut, what will happen? All those things you have to be 100 percent sure, doctor. No courtesy in exam on right? If you didn't answer, there will be thousand people who are ready to answer, and that's how the competition is all about. They are all standard questions. You should not do mistakes. Seven month old boy develops a generalized limb extension, neck flexion spasms that occur more than 20 times a day. EEG is showing high voltage, poly spikes, low wave discharges. So, you know, what is the treatment? So, the child typical EEG pattern is that of the best syndrome for which the treatment is to give adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH is being administered. 
then uh, so the infantile spasms that you see in West syndrome currently only ACTH is capable of uh, um, uh, treating the infantile spasms of uh, the West syndrome. Five year old frequent staring spells does not respond to mother's call. By that time you should recognize examiner is talking about absent seizures. And itosuximide is considered to be the drug of choice. 35 year old she complains of headache and visual blurring and she has hypertension and papal edema. So how do you want to basically treat? Eclampsia is treated with max sulfate. Then 43 year old is having a lancinating pain radiating on the right side of her jaw. Is a classical example of trigeminal neuralgia. And how do you treat that? Carbamazepine 100 mg orally TID is considered to be the management. 23 year old, one week of worsening facial pain, intense shooting pain and it is only present on her right face and how do you want to basically manage? So classically, she has got multiple sclerosis with a plot. What is that called? Dawson's figure. Right? So multiple sclerosis can also be associated with uh, trigeminal neuralgia. 35 year old has severe throbbing pain, waking from the sleep at night and uh, it is centered around the left eye and uh, uh, it is more prominent in the night. And there is also striking personality change and he become agitated whenever that episode occur. So typically it is an example of cluster headache is what you need to basically remember. Then one more thing about cluster headache is all how do you differentiate that from migraine. Migraine is female classically. Cluster headache is typically male. So different types of headaches, how do you differentiate? Favorite MCQ in exam. Go to UMedico, open up general medicine, neurology. In that you go to topic of headache and my Atma will come out in UMedico app. To Within 20 minutes I revise all headache for you so that your headache is gone. And any question asked on headache, you should remember suddenly what we discussed in the video and then be able to answer correctly. That's very important. 76 year old man complains of dull left sided head pain with some radiation on the right side of the head. His ESR is 1 or 2 and uh, there are no malignancies. So what is this? Typically an example of temporal arthritis. 81 year old with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, he has got vesicles encrusted and burning uh, rash is classical of trigeminal uh, post herpetic neuralgia. 29 year old, typically the headache is happening uh, when he lies down and uh, uh, he recently had this diagnostic procedure. So what is it most likely to be? Any Nowadays, the post-spinal headaches have come down because of the finer uh, needles we are using. But uh, it can produce intracranial hypotension due to the drainage of CSF and that will drag the neurological structures and lead to development of headache. An obese 37 year old complains of daily headache worse in the morning, transient visual obscurations. There is a bilateral papal edema, classical Example of pseudotumor cerebri, which is an intracranial hypertension, basically. Idiopathic intracranial hypertension. 40 year old with sudden severe headache and uh, maximal intensity within 5 seconds. And CT is showing presence of the blood in the sylvian fissure. You can see this is sylvian fissure, which is classical of subarachnoid hemorrhage. And uh, the type of headache quality is called thunderclap. Headache is what need to be remembered. 35 year old woman who is a keyboard operator and she is having the typical risk of injury or median nerve. Those who do the use the keyboard, median nerve can get injured. So Suresh, you need to be careful. Right? 
the median nerve while you are using the keyboard you have to be careful then uh, 28 year old police officer sustains a gunshot wound in the upper end um, and uh, a partial damage of the median nerve is there what will it lead to typically any um, trauma to the nerves in the extremity will lead to the development of what is called causalgia which is uh, a disturbance in the sensory perception associated with hypesthesia, dysesthesia, allodynia. What is the meaning of hypesthesia? Accurate perception of the stimuli will not be there compared to normal person, these people. And a persistent discomfort is dysesthesia, like dysmenorrhea. Right? And allodynia is even non painful stimuli also look painful. So, that is all that can happen in causalgia, is what need to be remembered. 19 year old on a street fight typically is having a posture dislocation of the humerus uh, of the elbow and that injures the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve injury can lead to development of the claw hand or a benedict sign. Positivity is what need to be remembered. A young man had a fracture of the humerus in the automobile injury and uh, uh, there is a weakness on attempted flexion of the elbow and paresthesia along the radial and ulnar aspect of the forearm and what did he basically injure? It is a typical clinical presenting feature of musculocutaneous nerve injury. Often in the fractures of the humerus, musculocutaneous is injured and whenever this gets injured, the biceps brachii, brachialis, coraco brachialis, they all uh, are the ones which are the muscles involved, lateral cutaneous, lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm can get uh, affected and uh, there is a reason uh, musculocutaneous is the answer. An alcoholic man is having a Saturday uh, paralysis, night paralysis, which is basically radial nerve. 72 year old, slipped and fell in the bathroom one week ago and CT of the brain reveals a small subdural hematoma. Um, so, and uh, uh, typically subdural hematoma does not present uh, with uh, lot of uh, uh, clinical uh, clinical uh, revelation it will be very subtle people develop with a subdural hematoma dementia forgetfulness and everybody think oh he's a old man he forgot but the actual reason is the old man when going to bathroom had just slipped and then got up and then came back and slept in morning got up and after a few days started forgetting if you do the ct you can recognize the presence of Subdural hematoma, which is a venous bleeding, is what you need to basically remember. 16 year old, on the side of the head, by a bottle thrown by a friend involved in a prank. And he had a lucid interval. Lucid interval is epidural hematoma. And what is the important management within the next 4 hours? Basically, you need to do a burr hole craniotomy and drain that epidural hematoma, which is an arterial bleed. MRI basically is showing what? A epidural hematoma. And CT within two hours of the injury reveals basically how do you describe a biconvex lens shaped density on the frontal lobe <coughs> is a typical description. Elderly person, mild head trauma, progressive dementia, what is uh, the underlying cause? So, it is once more a subdural hematoma, which is a chronic subdural hematoma, is what you are able to see. 40 year old woman has a collision with the lamp post and she has an intracranial hemorrhage into which structure? So, it is into the temporal lobe into which the bleed has happened. A 57 year old, she strikes the windshield, became unconscious, and uh, uh, typically, there is a injury uh, which is leading to the evolution of the olfactory rootlets, which have got a very close relationship uh, with the cranial structures.
and that can anosmia can be one of the important uh, long term consequence of a traumatic head injury 18 year old she has intact cranial nerves and is able to move his shoulders he is flaccid and there is a definite sensory level at C5 then what is the management uh, of this given case so in this case there is an acute traumatic injury to the spinal cord so if you give a immediate intravenous methylprednisolone the results are dramatic so there is a reason high dose IV methylprednisolone produces a statistically significant clinical benefits in the patients who are having the trauma of the spinal cord three day old has a difficulty in breathing and his chest x-ray is being shown and what is the problem in this newborn so it is a respiratory distress syndrome caused by type 2 pneumocyte immaturity in which patients do you see these nails doctor severe CKD where chronic kidney disease you have Linde's nails in chronic renal failure where the proximal portion of the nail turns out to become white proximal part of the nail don't check yourself and uh, get worried everybody's nail proximal part slightly will be white eh? but uh, in this case too much white it is right so especially while you are preparing for uh, PG entrance exam lot of spare time will be there to bother all that we read in the book we think maybe this skin lesion is that huh? or uh, this uh, nail lesion is that a lot of people used to worry so what is this condition so typically it is an example of terrorist snails which is seen in CHF cirrhosis and diabetes now what is this condition typically this is an example of Murkis bands which do not move with the nails growth seen in liver disease and nephrotic syndrome now regarding these Murkis nails what are the important uh, points they don't move with the nail growth typically the lesion is in the nail bed and uh, the lines disappear when the nail is depressed and the blood is squeezed and it is assessed with hypoalbuminemia strawberry tongue where do you see in case of the Kawasaki disease and these are the classical psoriatic lesions if you do this question wrong no that means even that 15 days dermatology posting also you never has gone hmm? then uh, what is this condition typically so it is a squamous cell carcinoma presents like a cauliflower like mass can you see the cauliflower that is the reason you should help your mom in cooking also sometimes because one two marks because of the Mataji ki blessings uh, you will get if you help her in cooking food how a cauliflower if you are married at least help your wife in uh, cooking so that uh, uh, all that punya will come and you will get one more extra mark right now what is this condition that you are seeing so this is an example of a basal cell carcinoma a nodulo ulcerative lesion that you see on the uh, nose then uh, what is this lesion so uh, if you look at the basal cell carcinoma metastases are very rare that is it is only a locally invasive lesion V shaped gap that you are seeing here so where do you see this we see it in Darrier's disease where a V shaped nicking of the nails is typically seen now what is this split pleura sign so the split pleura is um, 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 you can be able to see both the pleura and it is because of the fibrin coating both the surface of the pleura you see this and typically it is seen in the case of uh, uh, whenever the two pleura get separated by the collection in the middle of the two now with regard to the pulmonary cavitating malignancy as what you can see here so typically what are the various uh, causes of cavitating malignancies a bronchogenic carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, sarcoma, anything can be cavitating because TB is not cancer. 
I think cheapest question in the planet. Hmm? Now with regard to the pulmonary cryptococcosis, uh, it is um, caused by the um, cryptococcus neoformans fungus um, is what need to be remembered. So how do you know whether it is a pneumatocele or abscess? Pneumatocele obviously doesn't uh, contain any fluid. I think these are the cheapest questions in radiology. This is a pulmonary hydrated cyst and uh, uh, if there is a calcification of the cyst that shows that it is a dead cyst is what you need to appreciate. In case of SIPAM what is not true? Typically uh, adenomatoid malformations that you see in the lung pulmonary congenital pulmonary adenomatoid malformations. Type 0 is a lethal type and it represents a global arrest of the lung development is what you need to appreciate. In HIV multilobar consolidation, what is the opportunistic infection? It is the pulmonary nocardiosis which is the most severe opportunistic infection that you can come across. Now in thoracic actinomycosis, what do you see? MPI mass which are forming fistulas to the overlying chest wall are common, definitely common in case of uh, pulmonary actino, thoracic actinomycosis. Septic pulmonary embolus are caused by what? Typically, uh, if there is any pacemaker wire or an infected DVT or a tricuspid valve, right sided endocarditis that can lead to septic embolism. Because right side circulation is going systemic, left sided venous circulation is all pulmonary. So there is a reason uh, uh, it can lead to development of septic pulmonary emboli. Regarding pulmonary coccidomycosis, patients are very much symptomatic presenting with cough, fever and uh, chest pain and fatigue. So where do you use this Montgomery tube? Montgomery tube is a silicon T tube basically. Ramsey Hunt syndrome, what is wrong about it is cranial 7. Even a school kid knows that. In case of perforation of pars flaccida, what do you want to do? You want to do MRM. Then a 5 year old is diagnosed to have a retraction pocket and cholesteatoma. So what do you want to do? You want to do audiometry tympanoplasty, meringoplasty and uh, 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 do you want to do them uh, part of the management yeah then Weber's test basically how do you do you place the tuning fork on the forehead and you will see which ear the guy is able to hear and you see the lateralization typically on the side where there is a deafness the Weber is lateralized you also can try, you can occlude one of your ear and then put the uh, vibrating tuning for the side where you occluded your ear, you can hear more amount of sound, which is that's how Weber lateralization occurs towards the worse side of the ear where conductive hearing loss is there. So that's how um, you try to differentiate from a pulse rini and um, the um, side where the deafness is. Once more, Weber and Rini, you have to be doubly sure. We have all that discussion very detailed way in our ENT videos in the U Medico app. Now, regarding tympanic membrane, what is wrong about it? Typically, it is 45 degree inclination, not 35. That's what you need to appreciate. So, what is the treatment of choice for the central safe perforation? So it is a meringoplasty where you do the repair of the perforation of the tympanic membrane. A four year old is having fever and headache and congested tympanic membrane, there is a bulge. How do you want to basically treat? You want to do meringotomy and provide ventilation by placing the grommet is considered to be the management. If a foreign body is inhaled by an infant, what is the next step that you want to basically do? You need to do bronchoscopy. That's a simple and most important thing that you need to do emergently. 
What is stapedius supplied, doctor? Stapedius supplied by Naru to stapedius, which is the branch of the facial nerve. So that brings us to the end of this week's uh, questions. Truly image based questions are about 30 to 40 out of this uh, 150. We will try to improve more number of much more challenging questions down the line. But overall in a mock test at least 70 percent score. How many questions this paper is? 300. If you are able to cross 210 out of 300, you are ready. If you crossed uh, around 230, you, are, you can stop reading and then just wait for the exam day to go and write. Be very sure. If you are at 150, 160 in this test, still there is a time where you have to run and can be able to um, achieve it because two months of time is still there. Okay. So good luck and read well and once more Thursday. Every Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, we have got a mock test. Thank you.